Uh, hello everyone. Uh, <laughs> not sure if you can hear me yet, but uh, I'm just going to get going anyway. Uh, as has been said, good afternoon everyone. Um, I apologize for not being with you today, but yesterday I had the bad luck of testing positive for COVID for the first time. So here we are. <sighs> okay. When I first saw this image, I felt alone. An instant reaction that it still evokes months later. I couldn't understand a lot about it. The image asked a lot of me as a viewer. The more I stared at it, the more I felt my reaction developing. Strangely, I came to find it comforting. Comforting because in the image was a link between myself and the central figure. I, and perhaps some of you, connected to the figure in his isolation. Then came fascination. I was interested in the story the image told and what messages it was trying to express. You may think that such a desolate image is a strange choice to write a presentation on, and perhaps it is. But the fact it evoked such a strong reaction in me meant I needed to explore it more. This is, in fact, a film poster for the 1968 film, The Fixer, designed by Saul Bass. Bass was an American artist and graphic designer who worked in the mid 20th century, with his work focusing largely on film posters and title sequences. He is also an Oscar winning filmmaker, but much of his most famous and acclaimed work is in poster design. He has designed some iconic posters for iconic films, most recognizably The Shining, or Vertigo. But the poster I'm showing you today is not well known, nor is it for a well-known film. The film The Fixer is based on a 1966 book written by American Jewish author Bernard Malamud. It tells the story of a Jewish workman who is wrongly accused of murder by the Tsarist Empire and who is the subject of unceasing anti-Semitism. The film is about his torture, his demand for a fair trial, and his struggle for a justice that never seems to come. It is a true story. Bass's art can be described as minimalistic, simplistic and symbolic, with the latter of these three being the most significant here, as I shall explain. For me, this poster represents the pinnacle of Bass's work, the ability to take a powerful story such as this and use as little shape and form as possible to produce meaning, intrigue, and beauty. Bass's intention here is the same as all poster designers, but something that he mastered first, to create a cinematic experience with a static image. A look at his other work reveals an interesting pattern. Bass's art is as simplistic as it is impactful. In this poster, the first thing that catches my eye is the crushingly dense black bar at the top especially catching given the nature of the film. For me, it represents the oppressive weight of the Russian Empire, skillfully contrasted with the seeming insignificance of the tiny figure. It also sets the scene in the dead of night and serves to accentuate the recognizable Russian architecture of Kiev's St. Sophia Cathedral. And look at the predominant use of uneven black lines. At first, it seems clear that these are fields but there is ambiguity. Could these lines be waves, telling us that the figure is drowning in his search for justice? Aside from the monochrome of black and white, Bass only uses one color in the entire poster, a striking light blue, which extends beyond the confines of the image to create a thick blue border. In my opinion, the most interesting thing this blue does for the poster is to create the impression of moonlight. We see no moon, yet the image is somehow exposed in a brilliantly vivid light, an effect created by the careful choice of colour. White is used solely for the typeface and serves to draw the eye down to the name of the film, always a key factor of an effective film poster. My choice of a film poster is not by chance. I've grown up with film posters around the house because my dad used to collect them including some by Saul Bass. 
But when I saw Bass's design for the Fixer, something felt different about it. It was recognizably Bass, but it lacked the forceful, imposing quality of some of his other work. It was striking, but not overpowering. This is, I believe, an effect created by the patchwork of short, long, short and long curved lines that make up much of the piece. <clears throat> Uh, and this effect is in stark contrast with many other secondary visual elements in his collection. For example, the rectangular blocks in The Man with the Golden Arm, or the singular body parts in Anatomy of a Murder. What this does is create a fluidity to the piece that immediately sets it apart from his other work. And I'm sure this more poetic quality is why the poster resonated with me so much. Such a strong sense of isolation is rare to capture so completely in a piece of art. But another artist who I think managed it successfully is Edward Hopper. Hopper was an American realist painter and printmaker who worked in the early 20th century. He's most famous for his watercolors, often praised for the truth with which they depicted America. When I see his work, it's hard not to make comparisons with the fixer. In the composition of each piece, there is a sense of absolute loneliness. Saul Bass was by no means the only minimalist designer of this era. It's widely accepted that Bass was part of a holy trinity of 20th century minimalist design, along with contemporaries Milton Glaser and Paul Rand. Together, the three artists reinvented graphic design, placing a new focus on simplicity and objectivity. Rand, in particular, was an early adopter of the Swiss style, an objective style of graphic design that became a staple of the modernist movement. The Swiss style informed much of Rand's work. For example, his poster for the 1950 film, No Way Out, is clean, simple and intriguing, all attributes shared by the Swiss style. It's clear to see how a work like this has influenced Bass's work, Bass and his art. <clears throat> Both posters use large blocks of colour, superimposed with images of the actors. In each, there is also a central focus for the eye, but it's worth noticing that in Bass's poster, this central element is symbolic. This is the perfect example of how Bass reinvented the Swiss style. As I mentioned earlier, the Swiss style places a large focus on objectivity or showing things as they are in an unbiased way. Bass, however, borrows many attributes of the Swiss style, but ignores objectivity in favor of his more subjective and symbolic style. Symbolism was a driving force behind Bass's design, something that is especially true for this piece. The main symbolic meaning in the image comes from the journey that Bass creates. We see an isolated figure moving from foreground to background with his back turned. It's clear where, his, where he is heading, but not where he has been. What is also clear is that this journey is a long one. Our figure who symbolizes the protagonist of the film is heading to his destination alone, with a quiet determination. This journey is Bass's way of expressing a long period of time. Here, it symbolizes our protagonist's wait for trial, with the cathedral in the background symbolizing the Russian Empire, and by extension, that trial. What's interesting is there's no Russian architecture of this type in the film at all. Bass has fabricated it for purely symbolic reasons. In a way, the central figure himself is also symbolic. Just one lone figure, yet symbolic of the millions of Jews who were persecuted by the Russian Empire, who did not expect justice, but injustice, who were treated not with respect, but hostility. Similarly, it can be no accident that the building represented is a Russian Orthodox Christian church. The figure would find no help or comfort there, yet he travels all the same. The poster focuses on this aspect of the film for a reason. Bass was, in fact, born to Jewish parents, so it's safe to assume that Judaism played a large part in his life. He also lived through the horrors of World War II and the Final Solution, and had experience of the rise of anti-Semitism. So it is of little surprise to a viewer that the poster has deep themes of support for an isolated Jewish community. And, of course, the depiction of a Ukrainian man being oppressed by the Russian Empire 
has never been more resonant and moving than today. And after all that, I've still left out the most interesting thing about this poster. Although I had no idea when I picked it, this poster was never used, never displayed, never seen by the public, never even printed until 1985. Just before the film's release, the studio rejected it on the grounds that it wasn't commercial enough. In its place, they chose this. Much more commercial, full of action, violence, war, everything that was required to get audiences in cinemas. But as someone who's seen the film, I can say this poster is misleading, to say the least. The Fixer is a story of loss, of loneliness, and most importantly, of hope. Now I ask you, which poster would you choose? Thank you.